Thank you. Um, I would like to start by thanking, thanking NEEDS for inviting me today. Um, I was here two years ago as a McGill representative, and I think if I remember correctly, it is right here that I started to be involved in promoting the rights of students with disabilities. And today I am very glad to be talking to you uh, about my experience as a student in science. So a little bit about myself first. I was diagnosed with a severe form of arthritis when I was 18 months old. This, this disease left me with extensive mobility problem. And with time, arthritis completely destroyed my knees and my hips. And now each and every joint in my body is, is attacked by the disease. Um, after going through several surgeries, I was able to regain the use of my legs, but I still find it very hard to walk, especially long distances. And since I don't have such a good balance, and some of you may relate, the winter ice, especially in Canada, gives me such nightmares. Um, arthritis has also destroyed most of my fingers, wrists, and it has now moved to my elbows. So in the school context, you can think that this causes pain when I'm writing, when I'm picking up and carrying books, et cetera, et cetera. So about six years ago, I decided to go into microbiology and immunology at McGill out of pure interest. I knew I would never work, I, I would never be able to work in a lab, but I really wanted to learn more about my disease. And of course, with limited upper body strength and practically no fine motor skills, you can imagine that doing a bachelor's in science, which involves lots and lots of labs, uh, papers to write, quizzes, or research to do, was not the easiest choice that I made. However, I am here to tell you that it is, it is possible. Why? Because I did it. So throughout my studies, I collaborated with professors and the Office for Students with Disabilities to find creative ways to allow me to complete my degree's requirements. I will not lie, navigating through my degree brought its own load of challenges, but I was able to tailor make ways to ac accommodate my needs by involving people at every step of the way. Uh, you have no idea how scared I was when I first went to McGill. A huge campus, a science program, um, yeah, as you know, there are a common accommodation that across the disability category, like note takers, extra time for exams, writing exams on computer. Um, of course, I'm grateful that my university made, made these accommodations available to me right away, right from the beginning. However, I will elaborate more today on the specific and unique difficulties that a stu students with disabilities in science face, and that can differ from other programs of study. As I mentioned, most science programs have laboratories among the required courses. And for example, a, a student who's visually impaired would have difficulty looking into a microscope or telling what color such and such bacteria colony is. As for my experience with a physical disability, I couldn't physically perform the, la the experiments. Uh, I wasn't able to do anything from handling the pipettes or buttoning my, my lab coat. So I first went to the Office for Students with Disability with this problem. They, they first assigned an attendant who helped me with things like tying up my hair so they would be out of the way, putting my gloves on, and she basically did everything I told her to do. And she also did the practical exams with me, so I told her what to do, and she did it, and I would analyze the results and answer the question. Looking back, I can say that this was not the best solution for me. I am a very anxious person. It caused a lot of stress. I was not comfortable asking a person to do stuff for me. So the next year, I decided to, I decided to meet with the, the lab professor before the beginning of the semester. And we decided that instead of having an, an attendant, I would be in a team of three instead of a team of two. So that way I could follow with them, they would do the, the lab, I would follow, I would write down data. Um, and it went really well. Um, also, instead of doing the practical exam, I did a written exam where I had to describe the experiments, the results, and the conclusion. 
And of course, with that anxiety and stress out of the way, I was able to do much better in class. So I think the main thing to remember here is to simply collaborate with professors and the Office for Students with Disabilities to find arrangements that suit each student's needs. So students, advisors, professors, service providers need to encourage this collaboration. And I need to say that my department was really open to the idea of having a student with disability in the program. I don't know if I was the first one. It would be cool if I were. Um, <laughs> That sometimes, I think just going to the professor directly and trying to see what can be done helps more than involving too many people in the process. But there's also times where you don't have the energy to handle everything, like finding note takers, even in, in vigilator for exams. So that's when the, the Office for Students with Disability comes in and does magic. But there are no right or wrong answers. I cannot stand, in and say, stand here and say, you have to do this and this to succeed. You need to find your own way as you go. Life's kind of that way. Um, another topic is the heavy science course load. And it has presented several bar barriers to me when I, ch I decided to choose that program. Because managing numerous th theoretical courses where, while having to deal with the stress of life, plus the stress of life with a disability, can be sometimes overwhelming. Um, after learning that I had the possibility to continue my studies part-time while receiving the same provincial financial aid, has made a very a huge difference in, my li difference in my life and in my grades. So students with low energy levels should not refrain from entering uh, part-time, uh, well, harder programs and should, should seek information regarding the possibility of studying part-time. On a side note, I want to say that I'm still fighting the ongoing battle of scholarships being restricted to full-time students. So students with disabilities who are studying part-time should not be discouraged from, from applying to a scholarship that has full-time in its requirements. So I, I urge each and every one of you to apply to every scholarship you want and say that you have a pretty good reason to be studying part-time and that no one should discriminate against that. Another very practical problem that needs to be addressed here is the issue of life after science. Well, after a science degree. So finding a job that we like and that respects our limitations does not always come easily. During my bachelor's in science, the career paths that were more, most advertised to me were either continue with a master's degree that would involve labs, or go into medicine, or become a pharmaceutical rep. None of them really caught my interest or was, were accessible to me due to my physical condition. However, there are careers for persons with disabilities in fields related to science that actually require this particular academic background. And it's only the, along the way that I discovered through an optional courses, course that I had a passion for languages and translation, and that I was actually good at it. So after my f finishing my bachelor's degree, I decided to continue with a certificate in translation. And there is a large demand in scientific translation these days. So had, had I not acquired a specialty in a field in demand, I would never have been able to become a scientific translator. And on the topic of things that you discover along the way, I will be going back to science next year. So when I said I, couldn't, I could not pursue a master's in science because of my disability, then I was wrong. Last year, I found out that there was a science prog program that did not involve labs. <laughs> so next year, I will be beginning a master's in epidemiology, a program that deals with statistics and not labs. So in conclusion, ignoring everyone that kept saying that I was wasting my time in the science degree because of my physical limitations, and in the end, proving them wrong is and forever will be a source of pride for me. And I can only hope that hearing from someone who succeeded will encourage you to apply to the program that you want, science or not. Thank you.